Today we're going to review for your CU7B test. Here's the formula that you need to know. You need to know your law of sines, your law of cosines, how to find the area of a triangle when you know one angle, and how to find the area of a triangle when you know all three sides. All right, so the first one says, use the law of sines to solve the triangle if possible. They tell me that angle A is 33.2, and that if there are two cases, will be true in both cases, that little a equals 24, and that little b equals 32. Okay, so knowing that, I'm going to set up, and this is upside down. This works also. There's two law of signs, actually. You can put the sides over the angles. We use this flipped over, but I don't know why I copied and pasted the upside down one. But they both work. So I'm going to set up sine of A over A equals sine of B over B. So if I solve that, I get 32 times sine 33.2 equals 24 times sine B. I'm trying to get B along, so I'm going to divide by 24. That gives me sine B equals 0.730842 arc sine. Make sure you're in degrees. And angle B equals 46.893. So we're going to call that for acute B, we get 46.9, which means obtuse B, if you take 180, uh, 180 minus 46.9, you get 133.1. Okay, so. Now, if we see how many triangles are possible, if I take 180 minus 33.2 minus 46.9, I get 99.9 degrees. And if I take 180 minus 32.2 minus 133.1, I get 13.7 which means both triangles are possible. So I've got to find little c in both cases. So to find, let me change colors here, to find little c in the big triangle, I'm going to do sine of 33.2 over 24 equals sine of c over little c. So if I solve that, I get C times sine 33.2 equals 24 times sine 99.9 divide by sine 33.2 and you get little c equals 43.2. So little c would be 43.2 in the acute triangle. And then to find it in the obtuse triangle, we're set up again, sine of A over A equals sine of C, which is 13.7 in the obtuse over C. So I get C times sine 33.2 equals 24 times sine 13.7 divide by sine 33.2 and I get little c equals 10.38. And there we have solved both triangles. Okay. And yeah, you got to round it like they ask you to. They want the sides to the nearest whole number and the angles to the nearest tenth of a degree. Okay. All right, so next it says, state whether the given measurements determine zero, one, or two triangles. So they give me angle A is 44, and they give me little a is eight, and little b is 
is 10. And I gotta figure out how many triangles are possible. Well, I gotta find angle B. So if I set up sine A over A equals sine B over B, cross multiply, I get 10 times sine 44 equals 8 times sine B. I'm trying to get B alone, so I'm gonna divide by 8. And I get sine B equals point eight six eight three two two arc sine to get B alone and I get angle B equals sixty point three degrees. So that would be acute B. To get obtuse B, you take one eighty minus three and I get 119.7 degrees. So now to see how many triangles are possible, if we do this one, 180 minus 44 minus 60.3, I get 75.7. If I do over here, 180 minus 44 minus 119.7, I get 16.3 degrees, which means both triangles are possible. And for this one, we didn't have to solve it. Um, we could have, we just had to de determine how many triangles were made. All right, it says use the given information to answer the question. What is true about possible triangle ABC? Well, if you say angle A is 36, little a is 2, little c is 14, if I try and find angle B, I could do, or angle C, I should say, because I know side C, I would do sine A over A equals sine C over C. When we cross multiply, we get 14 times sine 36 equals 2 times sine C. To get C alone, I'm going to divide by 2, which gives me 4.114496 equals sine C which I can already tell now is going to be an error message because when I arc sine, remember that plop has to be between negative one and one, and this isn't. So you're, if you type it in, you're gonna get an error message, which means no triangle is formed, okay? All right, it says two sides and an angle, SSA, of a triangle are given. Determine whether the given measurements produce one, two, or no, none, and then solve each triangle that results. So they give me measure of angle A is 69. They tell me that little a is 10, and little c is 6.3. So if I try and find angle C, I'm going to set up sine 69 over 10 equals sine C over 6.3. If I solve, I get 6.3 times sine 69 equals 10 times sine C. To get C alone, I'm going to divide by 10, and I get sine C equals um, where am I at? Point five eight eight one five five six six yada yada yada. So arc sine, and I get angle C equals thirty six point oh two. So this is thirty six point oh two. That would be the acute C. To get the obtuse C, I would take one eighty minus thirty six point oh two and I get 144, if we just round to the nearest degree, that'd be 144 degrees. So now, if I figure out how many triangles are possible, this would be 180 minus 69 minus 36, which gives me 75 degrees. And if I do this one, 180 minus 69 minus 144, I get negative 33 degrees, which means case two is not possible. So only one triangle is possible. And then you have to find little b. So if I set up sine 69 over 10 equals sine 75 over b, I'd 
have b times sine 69 equals 10 times sine 75 divide by sine 69 and I get little b is 10.3546 and they rounded it to the nearest tenth so they said it's 10.3 So there's my measure of angle C, measure of angle B, and little b is 10.3. Okay. Alright, so it says radio direction finders are placed at points A, all that right here, and points B, which are 4.75 miles apart on an east-west line with angle A west of B. The transmitter has bearings 30.8 from A and 315.5 from B. Find the distance from A. So they're looking for little b. This would be little a, call that c, this would be little c. So what they tell me is that you've got these uh, north lines there, if you will. All right, this transmitter has a bearing that is 30.8 from A. And this one is 315.5 from B. That means it comes all the way around to here, and that's 315.5. So to get what's inside, I take 360 minus, so to figure out angle A, this would be 90 degrees, so if I take 90 minus 30.8, I get 59.2. So in here is 59.2. And to get angle B, I'm going to take 360 and take off the 315.5, which would make the angle inside 44.5 degrees. And then I can get angle C by saying 180 minus 59.2 minus 44.5 is 76.3. And now, what am I trying to find? I'm trying to figure out the distance from A. So I'm trying to figure out little b. So I'm going to do sine of, I like this that, I picked c. So sine of 76.3 over little c equals sine of a. So sine of A, no I don't want A, I want B because I'm going to go to B. So sine of 44.5 over little b. So now if I solve that, I'm going to have B times sine 76.3 equals 4.75 times sine 44.5. So we're going to get B alone, so I'm going to divide by sine 76.3. And I get little b equals 3.426814905. And here's what's weird to me. Somehow they got this to bump up to 3.5. I did this a thousand times without rounding. I didn't round until the final answer. And... Um, I kept getting 3.4, so I'm going to have to check that out on a test if they mark that one wrong because it's off by a decimal point. Alright, so next it says an aircraft at sea, there's my aircraft up here at sea, is spotted by two observers here at A and at B who are 1,350 feet apart. As the airplane passes over the line joining them, each observer takes a sighting at the angle of elevation to the plane as indicated in the figure. It says alpha is 45 degrees and beta is 50 degrees. How high is the airplane? So this one we kind of got a little funny thing going on. I got to find that height in the middle. So at some point, I need to look at this right triangle to figure out that height. But until then, I'm going to first look at this big triangle. Okay, so if I look at the big triangle, I have 45, 50, and this is 1,350. If I could figure out either one of these sides, 
and I think I'll find out little a. Then I'll know an angle and a side and a right triangle, and I can use regular trig to figure out that height. So right now I'm going to use law of sine, but I need this angle, so 180 minus 45 minus 50 gives me 85 degrees, so that angle is 85. So now I can set up sine of 85 over 1350 equals sine of 45 over 8. So I have 8 times sine 85 equals 1350 times sine of 45. Alright, so then I would divide by sine of 85, and I get little a equals 958.24. So now I know, by looking now at this right triangle that I had outlined in yellow, I know this is 90, I know this is 50, and I know this is 958.24, and now I'm looking for that height. So if I'm standing here, that's opposite. That's hypotenuse, and that is sine. So I can set up sine 50 equals opposite, which is my h, over hypotenuse, 958.24. And to solve this, I'm going to multiply by 958.24. And I get h equals 734.0548, and we round it to the nearest hundred which is 734.05. Okay. Next one is pretty much exactly the same setup. Okay, we've got two observers 400 feet apart on opposite sides of a flagpole, so this flagpole's in the middle. The angles of elevation from the observers to the top of the pole are 15 and 17 find the height of the flagpole. So it's really just like the last one. So if I look at the big triangle, if this is 15 and this is 17, 180 minus 15 minus 17 is 195.3. 180 minus, what was that side? 180 minus 15 minus 178 is 148. So that's that angle up there, and we know this is 400, so just like before, I'm going to find that little piece. So if I do sine of 148 over 400, that equals sine of 15 over A. To solve for A, I'm going to cross multiply, so I get A times sine 148 equals 400 times sine 15. To get A alone, I'm going to divide by sine 148, and I get little a equals 195.3648, yada, yada, yada. Alright, so now that I know little a is 195.36, I can draw this right triangle here, and I've got 17 degrees there, 195.36 here, and I want the height of the flagpole, so again, that's going to be opposite and the cognates, which is sine of 17 equals h over 195.36. So to solve this, I'm going to multiply by 195.36, and I get h equals 57.1. Okay? Yep. All right, this one says the figure shows a 1,225-yard long sand beach and an oil platform in the ocean. The angle made with the platform from one end of the beach is 85 and from the other end is 76. Find the distance of the oil, find the distance of the oil platform to the nearest tenth of a yard from each end of the beach. So let's see, if I label this A, B, C, this is little a and little b, and that's what they're looking for. So let's see, what can I set up? Well, I'm going to have to find that angle up top. So 180 minus 85 minus 76 equals 19 degrees. 
So angle C is 19 degrees. So now I can set up sine C over C equals, I can do either one, I'm going to do A first, so sine A over little a. Cross multiply, I get 8 times sine 19 equals 1225 times sine 85. To get A alone, I'm going to divide by sine 19. And I get little a equals 3748.334. Alright, so that would be little a. And then to get B, I set up the other one. So I would have sine of 19 over 12.5 equals sine of B now over little b. So solve this one. I have B times sine 19 equals 12.5 times sine 76 divided by sine 19. And I get little b equals 36. So this is going to be 3650.89. Oh, the nearest tenth, point nine. And this would be point three. So it said use descending order, which means they want the big one first and then the smaller one. So I was today first and the smaller one second. Okay. Alright, it says solve the triangle round the length to the sides of the nearest tenth and angles to the nearest degree. And you can see that I have side angle side. That's going to be log cosine. Okay, so to figure out log cosine, what do they want me to do? Solve the triangle? Alright, so I need the other two angles and I need the missing side. Well, let's find the missing side. So if I'm looking for little c, I'm going to use that. So I have c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2 times a times b times cosine of 98 degrees. And if I type that in, I get c squared equals 58.68 square root, and I get c equals 7.66, which is approximately 7.7. .7. So there's little c. Now i got to find my other angles, so if I use that now, I could say, um, you could eat, oh, you do log cosines, or now I could do log sines, I guess, doesn't matter which one. Um, I think I'll do log cosines there. So if I do, let's start with A, if I do A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2 times A times C times cosine A. To figure out this one, that's going to be 36 equals 4 squared plus 7.7 .7 squared is 75.29 minus 2 times 4 times 7.7 .7 is 61.6 cosine A. So I'm trying to get A alone. <coughs> Excuse me. Subtract 75.29. And I get negative 39.29 equals negative 61.6 cosine A. Divide by negative 61.6. And I get cosine A equals. 6.6378246 blah 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 arc cos and I get A equals sorry I was not in degree mode let me try that again sorry so we've got arc cos So we get angle A equals 50.37 degrees. So again, I'm not rounding. Yeah, I did round. So that's why we're off there. I say 50, they say 51 degrees.
Watch your rounding, guys. Alright, and then to get B, we would do 180 minus 7 minus... Watch that rounding. Right. Same with that rounding. Probably because I rounded here, which rounded there, which rounded there, which rounded there. Don't round until the very end. Okay. Alright, it says solve the triangle if possible. They give us three sides. So we have to use law of cosines. Doesn't really matter where you start. Apparently, I started at with the B. So I said B squared equals A squared plus C squared minus 2 times A times C and 2 times cosine of B. So I get 153.76. 1477.64 minus 1460 cosine B. I did that and that and that. So now I'm going to subtract 1477.64. And that gives me negative 13.23. Divide by negative 1460. I get cosine B equals 0.906767. Watch the rounding. Arc cos. And I get angle B equals 24.9376. Which they said round to the nearest tenth. So angle B is 24.9 degrees. Okay, so now to figure out another angle, I did A, so I did A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2 times 12.4 times 29.2 times cosine A. So if I simplify all this, 25 squared is 625, that sum is 1006. That product is 724.16 cosine A. So I'm going to subtract 1006.4, which gives me a negative 381.4 equals 724.16 cosine A. Negative. Divide by negative 724.16. Cosine A equals 0.526679 arc cos, and I get angle A equals 58.2 degrees. So then to get angle C, 180 minus 24.9 minus 58.2, and I get 96.9 degrees. And there's the three angles with the three sides. So I solve the triangle. Alright, number 11, it says find the area of the triangle having the given measurements. They give me an angle in two sides. So we're using this formula instead of Heron's formula, which says my area will be one half of A times C times sine of P. So if I type that in, I get A. 17.5 times sine 33. Type that in. I get 281.8507. It said to the nearest whole number, so that would give me an area of 282 square feet. Okay. Another one with an angle in two sides, so we're using this one. Um, why they're using K, I don't know. Since we know angle C, we're going to find the area is going to be 1 half times A times B times sine of 132.9. That 
that gives me 888.52 times sine of 132.9, which gives me 650.8790164. It says to the nearest tenth. So we go out here, the 7 bumps it up, and we get 650.9. Okay. Next, they give us three sides, so now we have to use Heron's formula to find the area of my triangle. And to do that, we have to find the semi-perimeter, which is add up the three sides and divide by two, which gives me a semi-perimeter of 18.5. So now when I find my area, it's the square root. that all in underneath, you get 3059.4375. Square root that, you get 55.312.1822. They want to the nearest 10, nothing's going to happen, so I get 55.3. Alright. Again, three sides, so we'll use Heron's formula. i got to find my semi-perimeter, which is the three sides. Find the distance from the house at A to the house at B. So you're looking at this distance between them, which is found to be, the survey measures angle ACB, which is found to be 40 degrees, and then walks off the distance to each house, 40 feet and 50 feet respectively. How far apart are the houses? Well, we have side angle side, so that's law of cosine. All right, so I'm going to set up C squared, because that's what I'm looking for equals a squared, which is 50, plus b squared, minus 2 times a times b times cosine of c. So if I type that in, I get c squared equals 1035.822222228 square root, and I get c equals 32.184192. And they said to the nearest hundred, four won't bump it up, so I get 32.18. Alright. Now this last one is kind of a pain in the rear end. Alright. So it says, suppose a certain baseball diamond is a square, which is 75 feet on each side. So that's 75, 75, 75, 75. The pitching rubber is located 49.5 feet from home plate on a line joining home, base, home plate to second base. So if you picture this vertical line here, and everybody assumes that these are, like, it's perfectly 90 degrees. Now, it would be if, it, if the pitching mound was back here, but it's not. So you can see this is not a 90 degree angle. All right, but on this pitching line from home to second, that's a vertical line. And it says that this is 49.5. Alright, from home plate on the line joining home plate to second base. It says how far is it from the pitching rubber to first base? So right now they want us to find little c. Well, we can assume that if you look, this one is vertical. Okay, if I put this line, this horizontal line here, alright, this would be 90 degrees. So half of that would be 45 degrees. So I know that angle C is 45 degrees. Alright, so I'm going to use that to figure out little c first. So I have C squared equals 75 squared plus 49.5 squared minus 2 times 75 times 49.5 times cosine 45. That 
that gives me c squared equals the square root of 2824.98215. Sorry, so c is 53.15. So the distance between, from the pitcher mound of first grade, uh, first grade, first base is 53.15. Okay, so now it wants me to figure out the distance from here to here. Um, let's call that, I don't know, X. All right, well, to do that, I have to look at, I'm going to have to look at this triangle, okay, which, if you do, this is 90 degrees over here, okay, so this angle over there is 90 degrees, so if I use that, all right, I'm going to say um, okay. so I'm dealing with this half and I don't draw very well, that's a 90 degree angle, okay? So we know that this is 75, we know that this is 75, we know that this is 90 and I can figure out this whole side, which is going to be the long side, not all of it. It's not going to be what I'm looking for, but it's going to be from home plate to, from second base to home plate. So, if I call that, I don't know, let's call that, um, let's call that W. So, I would have W squared equals the other two sides, 75 squared plus 75 squared minus 2 times 75 times 75 times cosine 90. That gives me W squared equals 11250. So W equals 106.07. So this whole side is 106.07. But from here to here was was it 49.5? So if I just want the distance from home plate to second base, I would just subtract 106.07, take away the bottom 49.5, and that gives me the distance from the pitching mound to second base as 56.57. Okay, and then they want to know this angle here. They want to know this angle here. How far would he have to twist to see home plate? Okay? Turn, or I mean, to turn to face first base. He's looking at home plate. How far would he have to turn to look at first base? So we want this angle here, which I called angle A. Alright? So, to figure out angle A, I'm going to do 75 squared equals 53 one five squared. So that was this length, right? That we found in A plus forty nine point five squared because that's what this one is. Minus and then we're going to So I have seventy five squared equals fifty three point one five squared. 3.15 times 49.5 times cosine A. So if I simplify this mess, I get 5625 equals 5275.1725 minus 5261.85 cosine A. So now I'm going to subtract 5275.1725 I get 3495 equals negative 5261.85 cosine A. Divide by negative 5261.85, negative 5261.85. 
get cosine A equals negative negative 0 0.066 arc cos sorry, hit the wrong button there. Arc cos, arc cos, and I get angle A is 93.812 degrees, which will be 93.8 degrees. And so you can see that truly is not a 90 degree angle. Alright, so we are done. Happy studying, and I will see you next time.